babe. Just got done showering. And today is Saturday, so it's been three weeks exactly since my last competition. I had 5,000 calories the day of that competition. I had 5,000 or 4,000 something the day after, which was that Sunday. And then I started the uh, officially started the 21 day challenge that Monday. Now, I know it's not Monday yet, so the official 21 days has not been up, but it has been 21 days since I've been consuming 4,000 plus calories. So that said, I figured I'd go ahead and test my body fat and take my measurements because it's more convenient to do it today than any other day. So I'm going to do that right now and we'll see. Um, I'm going to take it just as I did the last time. I'm going to take it with the pinch test calipers using the Jackson Pollock 7 point test. And then I'm also going to go to the YMCA downtown and use their impedance test. So I'm going to get those results back to you and I'm going to take measurements. I'm really excited about the measurements because I uh, I can just tell that my muscles have filled out a lot more. So I, I'm expecting a pretty big increase there. I'm honestly expecting an increase in body fat too because I was so lean and at such a deficit when I started the 21 day challenge. Like I didn't do a reverse diet. I went from 1,650 calories at a deficit and like 3% body fat, you know, competition day to Bam, 4,000 calorie surplus, and I've actually trained less intense, not too less intense, but a little bit less intense, and I mean, I, I, I expect to have gained body fat, but I'm okay with that because I'm in the off season and I'm trying to put on more mass, more build more muscle, so I expect to gain some body fat. I'm not trying to stay at 3% year round. It's not healthy. Um, so that said, let's get these measurements in. I just did the caliper body fat test, but I think I'm gonna hold off on telling you what that is until after I do the test at the Y. Um, I'm gonna take measurements right now, so yeah. <laughs> take a while we'll be back in a bit <laughs> all right just get done with the measurements let me give you all an update here so measurements were taken last time on april 14th the competition was on april 15th so it's been about three weeks um i weighed 155.4 on the day of those measurements today three weeks later i weigh 167.6 so more than 10 pounds heavier my neck has increased by a quarter of an inch my shoulders have increased by a half inch my arms have increased by a half inch my waist has increased by 2.5 inches that's those 4,000 calories of food right there that's not like fat like I have gained some fat but, or I'd probably have gained some fat. But when you're eating, like, a lot of volume, and, like, these meals I've been eating, they're not just, like, olive oil and coconut butter. Like, it's three pounds of miracle rice, you know? That's going to expand that stomach and bring out that waist measurement. Now, does that mean it's all body fat? No. Does that to look at 2.5 inches increase in waist size and be like, oh, I've just gotten fat? No, not worried about it. It's just I've had a surplus of food coming in, my stomach's expanded. I got a big old belly now. Fat and happy Robert. Uh, hips have increased by 1.5 inch. Kind of same thing I was saying earlier. Thighs increased by 1 inch. I'm really excited about that. Like my arms and my thighs. Like all the places that I'm wanting to get bigger are getting bigger. Like, And my muscles look and feel more full. My pumps have been insane in the gym. Like when I hit a pose, when I hit a flex now, it's like, bam, filled out. Which I, I'm I'm excited to see. Uh, calves have increased by a half inch. The only thing that stayed constant was my chest, which is the one thing that I want to grow the most, because that's my weak point. And that stayed the same at 42 and a half inches. So, everything's increased. Everything in a good way has increased. 
the hips and or the yeah the the waist and hips have increased a lot. You know, I think it's just because like I said I've been eating more, but um, yeah, so everything's gone up. Weights up about you know from 155 to 167, so my weights up quite a bit. And again, just hinging off of what I said before about eating more volume foods, like that's gonna affect your weight too. There's so many variables at play. You know, your hydration, your meals. I mean, like when I was 155, I had been at a caloric deficit for so long, and I was always hungry, and all my meals were really small. You know, now I'm eating like 4,000 calories plus, and all my meals are really big. So there's a lot of food weight sitting in there. You know, you gotta account for that too. So I'm not messed up about the increase in the waist with the hip. I'm not messed up about the increase in the body weight. All my measurements have gone up in a positive way as far as I'm concerned. Going into my, um, you know, muscle building phase of this whole bodybuilding lifestyle, I'm optimistic and excited about it all. Now, that said, let's get our body fat tested with the impedance test. Seven. Alright, it is 11.15. I still have not yet eaten. I'm hungry. I'm on the verge of getting a little hangry. I'm that hungry. But, just got my blood, I just got uh, my body fat done, just got my measurements done. Got a lot done today. Got home and Amazon had delivered me some more blood ketone test strips. So, I figured I'd go ahead and test these while I'm at it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a quick blurb on what my take is on the body fat stuff. Um, but I'm gonna do that after I eat because I'm hungry. But I am gonna go ahead and test my ketone levels. Now, quick note on this. I haven't eaten anything today, so these, in theory, should be higher. However, I did have a, uh, a pre-workout kind of drink that had some acesulfame potassium in it and some sucralose. So it's possible that that bumped up uh, or kind of knocked down my ketone levels slightly. Shouldn't be significant. Um, but we'll find out right now. So it's asking for blood. We're locked and loaded here. That's not going to be enough. Well, there we go. Alright, here we go. Okay. Countdown has begun. Five, four, three, two, one. Point two. So that's not very much at all. So I would say that the uh, acesulfame potassium definitely hurt me. Might not do something with this clip. Don't know. Hmm. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We just got back from getting our body fat tested. It's at 11.49 in the morning, and I am, I'm getting hangry. I'm getting hangry. There's been like a lot of things going on this morning, and I need to get some food in me. So I've got my keto coffee here. Just a standard, not my normal double keto coffee, because I'm gonna have a, a big breakfast right now as well. I'm gonna dive into the details about that body fat test but uh, I'm gonna eat first. I do wanna touch on one quick thing. 
I got my uh, I got some more precision extra blood ketone test strips, so I tested that. Since I haven't eaten yet, I figured it would be a pretty high ketone reading, but it was not. And I think the reason was um, I had two servings of this caffeine-free pre-workout when I woke up because I took melatonin last night to try and fall asleep. I don't normally take melatonin, but I haven't been sleeping well, so I took some melatonin and then I woke up just like, I always wake up groggy when I drink or when I eat melatonin or when I take the melatonin. So I wanted to counter that, take some of this stuff that's caffeine-free. Most of this, the uh, energy comes from like cordyceps and just a, a mushroom variety, which I like a lot. But there is sucralose and ACE K in here. And I've been in ketosis long enough now that I could usually like not be affected too much, but since I didn't have any fat source with this, I tested my ketones and they were like super low, like 0.2 low. Um, and it's because I haven't had any fat today and I had uh, the artificial sweeteners. So note to self, I can take the artificial sweeteners in moderation, but I have to have a fat source with them, which is just common sense, I should have known better. But I wanted something to get me out of that groggy state. That said, I'm going to eat this big breakfast, which is a huge keto pancake slash cake thing that I'm experimenting with. It's got 30 ounces of that shirataki rice in it, five eggs, two tablespoons of almond butter, two tablespoons of coconut butter, raw cacao butter, and then that cream cheese mascarpone filling stuff. The coconut butter and the cacao butter were actually used for something else, but I burnt the coconut butter and it, I was about to throw it away, but it made like this really like caramelized, browned like sauce. So I'm gonna drizzle that all over the, the pancake and it should be pretty tasty. So that meal is gonna be 1,455 calories, which means so far for the day, after eating all this, I'm gonna be at 40 grams of protein, 24 grams of carbs, 162 grams of fat, and 1,700 calories only 13 grams of net carbs. So that is that. I'm about to dig into this and I will be back to kind of do a uh, touch up on um, like a recap on the body weight, uh, body fat measurements because I've got a lot of interesting suggestions or I don't know, ideas as to why they are what they are. So stay tuned for that and I will see you in a little bit. <laughs> Quick update for the day. It is 4:49 p.m. and I've only, I haven't had hardly any calories. Um, had that big pancake thing earlier, which was good. Since then, I've had a super light salad with that uh, power blend of kale and spinach, um, with only one tablespoon of olive oil. And I'm getting a shake made right now with uh, only 394 calories. 32 grams of fat and 16 grams of protein. I'm kind of holding off on my calories today because I I went to the meat market and I bought some some brats and I got half a rack of ribs. So I don't really know what I'm gonna eat with that yet. And I kind of want to give myself some flexibility, um, some wiggle room. So I've got that. Uh, so yeah, it's almost five o'clock and I've only had after I drink eat this shake. It's gonna be 2,273 calories. So quite a lot more calories left for the day. Alright, the chaos of the day just keeps adding up. I have not eaten that much. We're going to have ribs tonight, I do believe. I've got a can of sardines right now and I put half a teaspoon of salt on it because I haven't had that much sodium today. I'm only at like 800 milligrams. I'm trying to average about 4,000 a day. So I put half a teaspoon of salt on there. That'll give me another 1,000 milligrams or so. Got my keto coffee, gonna go for a quick walk and relax and try and like decompress from the day. So I'll haul it back at you in just a little bit. Sorry today has been such utter chaos. We've had a lot going on. We're moving to Arkansas, the whole house is torn apart. We've had people coming in, buying stuff off of Craigslist. So it's been crazy. Right now my table that I've been filming at has been sold. So I'm sitting on half the table in a little bitty chair. 
Still see the same background, but I'm sitting down about two feet lower right now, so everything's a little crazy right now. But I want to talk about the body fat measurements since we did that today. So I got, uh, we did, we started off with the pinch test. Last time I did the pinch test was on April 14th, and I measured 3.78%. Okay, I did a uh, the impedance test at the YMCA that next day, I believe, and I got 4.3%. So 3.78 with the calipers, 4.3 with the impedance test. All right, and then I had that video a couple days into this challenge where I got 3.3% on the impedance test. All right, I think that drop in body fat was due to the fact that that was after the competition, so I'd started eating a lot more, like you know, 4,000 plus calories a day, but it was so soon after the competition that I obviously hadn't gained body fat. You know, you're not gonna gain a whole bunch of body fat in a couple days. So my body weight had increased significantly, and significantly, I mean, you know, five pounds or so, but my body fat hadn't, which is why um, the, the machine measured a lower body fat because I weighed more, but I was still just as lean, if that makes sense. Um, now, I did the pinch test this morning, three weeks after the competition exactly, so 21 days after the competition. And since I've been, in 21 days of eating 4,000 calories plus, because I started a couple days early. And I got, um, 5.5% with the calipers. So 5.5% with the calipers. So uh, not quite two percentage points higher, but almost two percentage points higher. On the impedance test today, I got 5.5% as well. So it's pretty safe to say that I'm about 5.5% body fat right now, which means I am about two points up from where I was at the onset of this 21 day challenge. Now, does that 21, does that, does that mean that I've gained two percentage points on body fat because I'm consuming 4,000 plus calories a day? No, I do not think so. I honestly think that if I had started this challenge at a maintenance level on my calories, I don't really think I would have gained any body fat. But since I started this, this surplus at such a deficit, I mean, I went straight from 1,650 calories in competition prep mode, you know, working out several days, like six, seven days a week, cardio every day, weight training every day, to a little less intense with the workouts, still pretty intense, but a little less intense, and not quite as much cardio, not as much posing, which burns a lot of calories, and you know, more than 143% increase in calories, you know? So my body was like a sponge and it just soaked all those calories up and I've gained a little bit of body fat, but I'm not even messed up about it because my muscles are more full, I'm more powerful in the gym, I have more energy, um, I feel great, I feel like I look great, I mean my vascularity is there, like I feel really, really good. So. I think I could probably maintain 4,000 calories and about five to six percent body fat going forward now without any additional increase in body fat. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Um, I see no reason to intake less than 4,000 calories because I'm not like force feeding myself. I'm able to eat 4,000 calories comfortably. So this is becoming quite the long rant here. I'll go into more details tomorrow because there's a lot more metrics I want to bring to y'all. I want to talk about the um, blood work when I get that back on Monday. I wanna talk about, I've already kinda of covered the measurements. I don't want this video to get too long. All right, real quick for the last move of the day here, we've got uh, half a rack of ribs, about 16 broccoli florets sauteed in Kerrygold butter, and we also have half a, uh, or a quarter of a keto pizza crust. So, our daily macros are gonna be 4,000, 256 calories, 376 grams of fat, 62 grams of carbs, of which 35 are net carbs, and 152 grams of protein. So staying solid with the ratios, 14.3% protein, 6% carbs, and 80% fat. 
all is well here. One more day to go on this challenge and still going strong. So, about to dig into these ribs. I'm super excited about it. And I'll talk to you after.